back. This is Adventures with Dr. Joe. Today I'm excited to have received the Prusa XL printer. It's made in the Czech Republic and I ordered it about 10 months ago so it was nice when it showed up. This will be the first of a series of the assembly and use of this Prusa XL printer. It is the semi-assembled version so we're going to go through each step and I'll show you some uh, improvements in, in its assembly to make it easier to get you up in printing. Let's take a look. The first thing I'd recommend is to take all the hardware out and arrange it in ascending order. What we have here are the very short three millimeter. These are three by eight going all the way up to four millimeter and then finally bearings and other assembly parts. The next thing is to take a look at the cheat sheet. This is the cheat sheet and I have the Phillips and Torx screwdriver needle nose plier that come with it, the various Allen keys, four millimeter, three, two and a half, and then the Torx T10, T8, T6, a couple wrenches, and these are some uh, inserts, some fill-ins, and you can see the various, all different lengths, and also a nice chart here to line your screws up to identify exactly which one to be used. These two parts are to be added to the three millimeter Allen wrench to turn it into a torque tool so you can get the proper torque for the screws that we're getting ready to place. I think an important step in the assembly of this is to have a nice flat surface that's at a comfortable height that you can assemble your printer on. This is a table that's mobile and has casters not only do I assemble it on this table, but I'm going to use it on this table and it has enough surface area that I can put my filament rolls and other things that I'm going to be used when I do my printing. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take the base out. This is the base and this is it. This is how it comes assembled. The stickers are on the left side. There are two captive nuts here. That's the front. The side with no stickers is the right. The rear is opposite the side with the two captive screws. So we have left side, right side, front, and rear. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the right corner and we're going to rotate this around to us and take that captive screw, which is here, and move it all the way to the end. So you can see this will slide in this groove, but it needs to be all the way to the end then we take one of our two extrusions notice the little sticker the sticker goes to the back that will fit in the hole and there is a there's a, a prominent area that fits in this groove so that pin goes in there and that fits in there just like that so we're going to use the four millimeter by 12 screws using the three millimeter allen key Put that in that screw, in that first hole, right there. And because this is a rounded head, it can it can be it can tighten at an angle, which is really nice. This head has rounded rounded on it, so we'll just get it started. Make sure it's pushed all the way to the back, and we're just going to make it snug, not tight. That's enough. Now we'll take the next one, which goes behind it. I'll pivot this around, making it easier to see. Goes back in here. Put that in there, and just start to tighten it. Again, snug, not tight. We're going to use a torque wrench in the future. That is done, so our first extrusion is placed. Now that we've got it like this, we'll get the next extrusion with the sticker at the bottom facing to the rear. This is the rear. Get that captive nut, put, bring it all the way up. Extrusion facing to the rear. That this prominent area fits in this groove and the pin fits in the hole. There it is, and then we'll get our 
Next couple screws. Get it started. These are the perfect length for this. Okay, there that one is. I'm just going to turn this around a little bit more. Start this on the front side. I'll show that right now. The front side. We're just going to tighten this just snug. That's great. Now we're going to stop. Now time to put our z-axis parts on. These are the two critical z-axis parts. They're very delicate, be careful, do not scratch them. First things first, here's that captive nut. This goes in the center of this hole. And you can, you can feel that, that opening for this pin right there in the bottom. Of this, and that, that centers that. We take off these transportation foam blocks, they're not going to be used anymore. And the Z-axis that has the pivoting arm goes on the right. The fixed arm goes on the left. We feed the cable carefully through the hole. Be sure not to pinch it. And then that fits in there just like that. Again, we're going to use two of those four millimeter by 12 uh, screws, tightening them with this three millimeter Allen key. Here's a close up. Put the screw on the ball end through the opening. And just start it in that captive retainer. And it will grab it. Because these, and then just, just tighten it up just slightly. And then put the next screw in the back of the z-axis extrusion and I'll rotate this to show that okay here's the back side of that there's a screw you might have to loosen the other screw to get this to line up which is no problem and then believe me once you once you feel it it's lined up and so we're just going to snug it up not too tight just so the metal parts t touch right there that's enough. We'll place the second Z-axis, the one that is has movement. Line up the retained fastener with the opening, then let's feed the wire through the motor part. And then we'll Feed our two screws in. First one, again, not too tight because you want a little bit of play so you can get the other screw in. And then we'll put the other screw in the back. I'll rotate the base so we can see that. Okay, I've rotated the base. This is the back side of the right z-axis there it goes and just just snug not tight so good let's review quick review again the stickers on the left side the two retaining elements are in the front front left with the sticker on the right this is the back we've got the two extrusions with the two 4 by 12 millimeter screws and then the two z-axis the fixed on the left the one that has movement on the right the, the wires aren't pinched nothing scratched there's and all the four screws are snug but not tight okay we're going to put together the torque wrench which is basically just the three millimeter allen wrench it goes through this device these are all 3d printed and then here's the handle it just fits on it like this so there is your torque wrench and as you tighten it when it reaches this opening that's when it's okay that's that's when to stop
Right, let's use the torque wrench here. going to torque it. So we're going to watch the torque wrench and I torqued it enough when it, when it goes to that point like that. So that screw has been torqued properly. We're going to do all the same, all the other screws the same way. Let's watch it being torqued again. So here's the torque wrench. I'm tightening, tightening, tightening. And when it reaches that slot, just like that, that's tight enough. So that's been properly torqued. Again, we do that to all eight screws. So when using this torque wrench, they, they have to be actually pretty darn tight and be sure that the uh, this uh, 3D printed part clips onto the uh, short end of the torque wrench and that you torque it so that it lines up with that opening. These are the parts for the next step. This is obviously the XL LCD, the two three by 10 millimeter screws. This is the XLCD PE cable, the XLCD ribbon cable, the frame rear cover, two of those, the XLCD cover, the Z motor cable bottom cover, and the frame corner cable. We're going to put a piece of cardboard down here. We're going to turn this on its side uh, and assemble this. Now, the instructions will say mount this first. And by the way, this can be mounted either in the center, which is what I'm going to do, or moved over to the left side. But the cable's too short to move it over to the right side. So I'm going to put mine probably in the middle. But I'm also going to connect these cables first before I mount this. For me, it's just easier, although they suggest in the instructions to put this in first, then mount it, but I think it's gonna be easier to mount these cables onto the LCD screen first. There are two versions of this LCD screen, one that has the fastener here, this is version B, and one that has fastener down here, which is version A. So anyway, we're gonna be using this one, which is version B. And the first thing we're gonna do going to attach our PE cable to this connection right here. So that's done. Now we're going to connect our LCD cable. This ribbon cable, the ends look almost identical, but you need the cable, when the cable's facing this way, for this small pin to be on the right side, not the left side. So it must be on the right side, and that will allow it to fit into here. Just like that. There's the first piece that keeps the cable intact in place. This will be the next piece. Don't pinch the cable. go. Then we need the 172 millimeter base, which is this piece. We're going to insert that now. Okay, there's all the covers snapped in place. It ended up looking actually incredibly good. And now we'll continue running the wire. this extrusion. And then we have the 182 millimeter cover. 
started. Now we're going to try to put this Z motor cover on. Like that. So there it is. Oh, okay. okay. Now we're going to bend these wires up and over very carefully. Put one of these end caps on. This cover has to be flush with this extrusion, so if it's not, loosen it, push that Z cover over to get that lined up. And once we get these wires over here, they may all fit in this channel. Then we're going to use a 3 by 10 millimeter screw to go right in here. Now I unraveled the cable. I'm going to put this cover on. Make sure it's, it fits exactly right. It's good right there. this cover here We'll get our next 3 by 10 millimeter screw. Get our cap on. Get that in that channel. And this screw fits in the opening beneath. So that's the end of our first part. Time to have a gummy bear, which is included in the kit. Hang on. Okay, that's the end of our first section. That went well. Time to have a gummy bear. Stand by for number two in the series. Thank you for watching. If this was helpful, please click thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. Thank you.